Another type of import that we can do into your Access database would be from a text file. A text file is also called an ASCII file or a comma delimited or a CSV file. Maybe you've heard of those. It's just a plain unformatted text file. So let me show you a text file first and then we're going to import that into uh, Microsoft Access. So I'm going to go into my Windows Explorer and I'm going to pick on my documents. And in my documents I have this file that's called Europe Expenses. Alright, so here's Europe Expenses and here's the text uh, file version of that. So I'm going to double click on that. And then I'm just going to do a, an ex, uh, a maximize. Now notice how the first row of the data contains your field names. That doesn't always happen on a text file, but when that's there, uh, Access can use that for the field names as well. And after that, each row is a different record, and each column is a different field. Okay, so uh, this can this will will go nicely into Microsoft Access. We're going to close that window. So that's what the text file looks like. Now let's see how we're going to pull that into Microsoft Access. You're going to pull your you're, you're going to pick on external data. And then notice one of the ones that we can import is a text file. So let's go there. Now uh, at this point we can do a browse and point to the text file that you want to import. So I'm going to find one, well we'll use that same one we were just looking at, it was called Europe Expenses. There it is. We'll double click on that. Now if you import, it'll make a copy of that uh, text file into Access and uh, there'll be two distinct copies of the data. I can take that data and append it to another table. So, uh, you know, I can take that data and add it to an existing table, no problem. Now we can even link it. What that means is it, uh, if you change the data in Access, then the actual text file will change. Or if you change the text file, the actual Access database will change. So that's the difference between an import and a link. In this case, we're just going to do an import and we'll click on OK. Now uh, here's the data. So you can see the first row contains your field names, the other rows are their records. So delimited means that um, each field is separated by a comma or a space or a semicolon or some other character. So um, that's what a delimiter means. Fixed width means the fields are always consistent and they always start in the same columns. Like maybe field 1 would start in column 1 and field 2 would start on column 10 or field 3 would start on column 15, whatever it might be. But that's not the case with ours. Ours is going to be delimited. If it were fixed width, you would see nice even columns of data. When we don't see that on this screen, then we can say that it's delimited. We'll pick on next. Now, you want to tell it what it's delimited by. Mine happens to be delimited by a tab, but sometimes it might be a semicolon or a comma or a space. So actually, you can try these different ones if you're not sure. Sometimes it might even be another character. If you went back to the previous screen, you might see what that character is. But in this case, clearly, it's going to be a tab. Now, uh, here is an important choice that some people skip right over. If the first row does contain our field names like ours does, you want to make sure you click on that box. Now the text qualifier, what that means is sometimes text might be surrounded by um, quotes. Like, like that, that was the case on this one. You, you, sometimes when you see these quotes in some of your fields, then you can say the text qualifier is your quotes and it'll get rid of those in the, in the data. Right, so uh, it's important to pick your delimiting field, uh, your delimiter character, I mean, and also if the first row contains your field names, that could be important for you. We'll pick on Next. Now you can change the field names and the data types for each field. So let's say for the currency amount, I want to make that a currency field. All right, so we can do that right from the screen, or we can also change the field names and do those field by field. We'll pick on Next. Now here, if we say let access add the primary key, that'll um, put one of those auto number fields in there for you automatically. You may have your own field that's unique for each record. If you do, you would say choose my own primary key and then pick your field that would be unique. Or you can say no primary key. 
I would probably pick uh, one of these top two. So I'm going to say let access have the primary key, and that'll that'll um, put a sequential number on each record. We'll pick on next. Now you want to give that table a name. Well, I can call it Europe expenses. That'll be fine. If I wanted a different name, then we can do that. So we'll pick on finish. So it was able to import that table into the Europe Expenses Access table. Now, if you want to save the uh, import steps, what that means is if you think that you're going to do this again using that same data, then when we save an import step, it'll just be like one or two steps, and then you're, you'll, you'll be done. It, it basically recorded what we just did. So we can give that a name. Now you can even create an Outlook task that will add that to Microsoft Access and actually schedule that for you. So we'll pick on uh, Save Import. Now to get to that import task, we're going to pick on External Data and say Save the Imports. Now I, I did one in a previous video for the Excel one, and then here's one for the text data. So you can just really just click on those and it would run that same import step for you very quickly. But if you notice, we have a new table that's called Europe Expenses, and that's the exact data from the text file. And notice how we can import that right into Microsoft Access. So that's how we import a text file into Microsoft Access.